Hi, thank you everyone. Um, so I'm Victoria Lawson, I'm the Director of uh, Customer Relations, Environment and Culture from the London Borough of Hounslow. Um, I'm going to just go through our digital journey uh, in Hounslow, but um, I'm here just representing a much larger team that have really helped us uh, move forward, along with some of our key partners in Liberata, Bartek, and obviously Jardu. So, every journey has a starting point, and ours is, uh, is, is quite different, I think, in some regards. Um, it's, it's been quite a challenge, I think. So I started in Hounslow in March 2006, and this is where we were uh, in terms of our digital. That's like every single member of Hounslow coming in to visit us. Um, and actually, we made it nice and welcoming. We've got lots of chairs, we've got a cafe, um, and um, it meant that we had um, a very, very, very busy reception in 2015. You know, but why have one reception when you can have two? And we had the children's reception, probably where Siraj is sat right now, um, in a different annex. Um, and we also had our main reception. Um, we actively encouraged unnecessary visits for our residents. And because of that, we had long wait times in queues when visiting reception. So much so, they went out the front door. So you might have thought, oh, maybe they've got it right on the phones. No, 64% call answer rate um, in 2015, with the majority abandoned, but why wouldn't you? because they had 165 different options, and it could take you almost five minutes to actually speak to a human being. Um, but given that, we also thought, well, actually, you know what, let's make it really complicated for our residents to speak to us, um, because why have one telephone number to report dog fouling when you can have three? Um, and actually, what we were asking the residents to do was to tell us whether it was on our land, private land, or some other estate. And of course, that's what residents are really good at, because they can also distinguish between a council and the NHS. Um, so this was it. And you think, maybe their website was stellar. No. Our website back in 2015, imagine a blank piece of white paper, stick a large photo on it and some logos, and you're pretty much where we were. So unsurprisingly, 4% of customer transactions were completed online, and on reflection, it was quite astounding that those 4% were able to do that. Um, of course, we were then poorly rated by uh, Soccer Tim, and we had some severe legacy systems. In fact, some of those legacy systems were older than members of the staff. Um, to make it more challenging, we have a very specific deadline in which to uh, change that uh, picture. Because we're moving to a new civic centre, and it is considerably smaller than our current civic centre. So without question, it was absolutely essential that we changed our customer experience. This is a good question. So where do we start? Where do we start? So for me, it was really about what is our ambition as an organisation? So we started talking about ensuring our residents are satisfied by their experience with us. I think previously Hounslow's ambition was to delight its residents. I think it's fair to say we've done a lot of things, surprise, fr frustrate, shock, but I don't think we'd ever quite delighted. So uh, we moved back to basics and said actually the most important thing that we should be able to do is ensure our residents are satisfied by their experience with us and actually where residents are confident and capable of using the web, let's move services online. So we created a new vision for customer services for the organisation. Um, we wanted to set out a new set of expectations. We wanted to outline what good looked like. And actually, I wanted to create a new operating space for the organisation. Now, part of that was also looking at digital. So quite a lot of organisations think about digital by default. Uh, but very much in those early days, when I spoke to people about digital, they're like, do you mean the website? Do you mean a form? Because we've got a form. You go online, you download the PDF, you fill in the form, you send it back to us with the check. And even one service said to me, we do postal orders. And I was like, great. And then had to go home and Google what a postal order was. Because I had no idea, I'll be honest with you. Uh, and I'm thinking, so part of our journey has been challenging the staff. So I've been saying to them, but when was the last time you wrote a check? And they're like, I don't even have a checkbook. And I was like, 
Do you see where we're having challenges with engaging customers and yourselves if we're not thinking about what do we use in our own personal everyday that we need to start thinking about using it in our, our own organisation? So we went right back to basics. So we needed a new strategy. Uh, we needed to think about our technology. We need to think about our policies and processes, the structure of customer services, how we got people talking about digital and culture. And we really needed to put some digital foundations in place so that we could really begin to reimagine how we should deliver services. So for me, what we needed to do was put the customer right back at the heart of everything that we do. For too long, I think, we'd been thinking about what makes it easier for the service um, rather than what makes it easier for the customer. And what we were experiencing in Hasla was a lot of that frustration coming out when they're trying to engage with us. Um, and we needed to really significantly improve that. So we spent a lot of time working with our customers, with our members, with our services to really think about what does that digital and customer transformation program mean? I have to say, we're not actually going to get a Ferris wheel at the new Civic, which is slightly disappointing. But actually what you can see is the journey from a focus on heavy footfall uh, heavy reliance on the phone to really thinking about how do we use the web to really enable um, people's um, engagement with us. So we came up with a first set of key priorities, new website and a customer account, and that would be the first time how I would have a customer account, improve the telephony experience, think about how we operate a single reception, um, look at how we would improve our performance and systems around uh, customer feedback, and very much looking at the current custom, customer demand and how we develop a digital program. So I'll go through some of those um, areas that we've been through. Predominantly, we focused on waste and recycling and garden waste, so we went for the really big, high-volume transaction areas to begin with. Um, and we also uh, reviewed and retrained and restructured the customer services team to better support that digital perspective. So we went from a very white uh, website to one that had a really strong transactional focus. And we spent a lot of time working with customers, working with our members on what that should look and feel like. So for the very first time, we were asking residents, how would you navigate this system? What are you looking for when you're engaging with um, our website? And obviously, it's now got a much more transactional focus. At the same time, we modernised our systems. Um, we made a very bold decision, and we weren't going to have a CRM, partly because we couldn't afford a CRM. So we went with a CXM. Very much saw that as a CRM light, and saw that as our opportunity to really engage customers and start for the first time to collect information on customers that were engaging with Hanslow. So. That's what it looks like. Um, in our first month of going live with our website, we had um, 2,000 uh, sign-ups to my account. I know one of them was me and one of them was Siraj, but other than that. Um, and we now have well over 20,000, so anyone who signed up for our Garden Waste service also has an account. Our big priority when we launched our website in January 2017 uh, was to look at waste and recycling so we knew later that year we were going to change our waste and recycling service and we were going to re refresh our approach to recycling and we were going to implement fortnightly black bin collections. And I think everyone in this room knows how time consuming that is. Um, so what we wanted to be in a position to do is to be able to support that for our residents online. So we created a missed bin uh, process. Sounds really easy, but it's actually... Um, our first end-to-end -end process that so actually goes all the way back into our in-cab technology and back again. So a uh, big shout out to Bartek who worked with us on that. Um, we are really proud of that full automation um, and made a really big statement, I think, uh, to our residents and internally about what we wanted to do around our digital programme. We then got everyone to check their collection dates because actually when we changed um, our waste and collection services. We needed residents to know uh, what their collection date was. That was actually harder than it sounded because members loved the PDF download that you could print off and stick on your fridge. Um, and we also got residents to be able to report and request additional containers because we were going to go live with red, blue uh, boxes and we wanted residents to be able to ask for more if they required them for their recycling. 
Now, that gave us a really strong foundation for when we made the decision after fortnightly black bin collections had settled down, that took eight to 12 weeks, uh, that we should implement garden waste on the same platform. So using XFP forms, uh, the CXM, and actually for the first time, um, looking at implementing direct debit. So this is what we did in about two to three weeks. I strongly recommend giving yourself a bit more time if I were to do it again. Um, but we made the decision probably mid-December that we were going to go live, and we went live on the 1st of February. So our payments were integrated into First Capital. Um, and in six to eight weeks, we had 16,000 subscribers to our garden waste, 86% completed online. We were pretty chuffed with that. I think that was very, very positive and really sent out a strong message that actually residents are capable of using online where they need to and where they weren't able to. They came in, uh, my reception team worked with them, helped them either self-serve or, or fill it out. But of course, that won't all get us all into our new civic centre and all our customers. And I have to admit, I had a few nightmares of them queuing down the high street. Um, so we also work, been working with Liberata um, around how we changed our approach to appointments. So we all know March, April, May is a very, very busy time for all councils when council tax uh, goes out. So in 2015, during that period, we had over 30,000 people visitors a month. Um, this time in March, April, it was under 8,000. So a significant change. A lot of that in how we approached appointments, pre-booking appointments, and actually that's just immediately saw a reduction in visits. I'm actually quite excited about what we'll be able to do with Liberata next, the single sign-on, and particularly now they're a partner with Jardu. So um, I think this is a watch this space. So not long after that, we thought, let's go out into the organisation. Let's give CXM to all of our councillors and about 250 staff, because that will be a way to get people to really start imagining what they can do with CXM in their services. So we went live with members' casework. And we had a particular deadline on this, because we like deadlines in Hounslow. And that was immediately after the local election. So we gave them a week to settle in. And then we told them that this was their casework system. Um, and it's gone down really well. Two weeks later, we went live with FOIs. And two weeks after that, we went live with complaints. So we're all live in Hounslow. It's been somewhere between two to six weeks, um, and it's going well. We're getting really positive feedback from staff about the ease of using CXM. What it also meant was that we were able to get rid of a very old, very big, very expensive legacy system and replaced it with this. And quite a number of staff were used to it. They'd seen it through uh, waste and recycling, um, and I think it's a really positive step forward. We're now starting to have services come to us about what they'd like to do next. Um, there are bits and pieces we're working on with Jardu about how we can make sure the reporting is really strong. Um, but the next step with this is the confirm, the push-pull into confirm. So we get several hundred service requests a month around our highways, uh, and we're seeing that as a fantastic opportunity to really make a big difference. So my team say to me, uh, working with me, it's like being in a roller coaster. Uh, they know exactly where we're going, but they better hold on because we're moving at pace. Um, so we also thought we'd change our entire telephony system, uh, and we spent time working with residents um, to completely streamline their telephony experience with us. Uh, we reduced all the options, and we reduced the depth of the options. So as soon as we could get someone in to talk to a human being, that's what we did. And we really had to push back against services who were saying, I need it for reporting. So, no, that's what a contact centre does. They have wrap-up codes. They can tell you. It doesn't mean you have to ask them, a, a customer five different things to get to a particular option so you know a little bit more than you did before. Um, we also created our single reception, and we went one stage further. We have a really big reception desk at Hounslow, and we've closed it. Um, we won't have a reception desk in the new civic centre, so we're focusing on triage, uh, making the team floor walk, engaging with residents as soon as they step through our front door. That's working uh, very, very well, and we're doing more work to really understand and drill under why people are visiting us. We've also implemented a new visitor system, looked at customer satisfaction, and we've also put in um, a new e-newsletter for our residents. 
I'll let you into a little secret. That one has been a personal ambition of mine. So when I joined Hounslow, um, as you do when you ever get a promotion, family are really proud of you. So my mum phones me up and she says, I've signed up to Hounslow's e-newsletter. Really? I go, oh, I'm sure we don't have one, mum. She's like, oh, no, 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 it's fantastic. I said, do you want to double check? She went, yeah, London Borough of Havering? I went, no, mum, wrong organisation. Um, she went, oh, it's a shame because it's a really good newsletter. So finally, I was able to email her this week and say, why don't you join Hounslow's e-newsletter and give up the Havering one? Just let it go. So, we're still on a journey, but we've had some fantastic achievements. So we have reduced our footfall into our reception by 50% um, in a single year. Uh, and we're on track to be around 90,000 visits this year. Um, we no longer have any queues in our reception and all of our visits are seen within under seven minutes. We've increased our telephony answer rate to 85%. And thankfully, no residents are no longer complaining about the telephone menu. Um, all the staff in my contact centre are 100% satisfied with their line management. And still more to do, but actually our online transactions are now up to about 20%, about 90,000 a year. I know for some that will probably be not very many, but for us actually a really good statement of where we've come from in the last 18 months. And our website got rated four star by Soccer Team. The team were really, really, really excited about that. Um, but we still have more to do. You know, we've got challenges with the resources in our contact centre. It still remains a really, a really popular method of contact. And we've still got work to do on our organisational culture. And really, the important one for me is how we continue to increase online transactions and really, really exploit the capabilities of CXM. I'm really excited about the Jardu Library. I think it's an opportunity for all of us to make steps forward that won't take as long as maybe we had previously thought. Um, we've still got work to do about educating and challenging traditional methods of delivery, particularly around some of our correspondence. Uh, we're looking at an appointments-wide system across the organisation, and by no means we've got a practical move to deliver, a move to a new civic centre in about six months' time. So. Um, I'm very proud of what we've achieved in Hounslow so far, more to do, uh, and I'm happy to take any questions.